What is up, guys? Welcome back to the Wildcast. Hope you're all doing well out there. In this video, we're going to be looking at the latest developments in the Virginia Roberts versus Alan Dershowitz case. So there are many civil suits going on right now related to Regina Roberts. This is one of them. And I haven't done an update on this video for a while, but I've been monitoring the docket to see if any interesting documents have been re uh, revealed. And uh, this one is uh, pretty damning. Uh, you know, it will depend on whether these accusations are correct, whether these depositions are true. But if they are, then this is very damning evidence against Virginia Roberts. And um, this these depositions, if true, will hurt Virginia Roberts legal case uh, against Alan Dershowitz. So before we jump into any of my evaluations of uh, these depositions, first, I'm going to lay out the case that's made by Alan Dershowitz. So Alan Dershowitz, as you guys know, as I've covered in many of my videos, has been very arrogant. And he's um, he's said that every single word that Virginia Roberts has said about him is untrue. And uh, his arrogance and his uh, pride is based on these uh, these depositions that were taken by Virginia, Ro by his lawyers of Virginia Roberts friends, uh, one of her childhood friends named us, uh, Rebecca Boylan and a recent, much more recent friend named Michael Spallholtz. These are the two people's depositions which we're going to look at today. And according to them, Virginia Roberts planned and executed these lies against Alan Dershowitz. That's the claim they're making. Okay, so first I'm going to go through the accusations that are made by Alan Dershowitz and the depositions of uh, Virginia Roberts' friends. Then in the second part of the video, I'm going to explain. Uh, how to evaluate the truthfulness of these claims and what Virginia Roberts can do to fight back against them if they're false. And uh, and so, yeah, I'm generally I'm going to comment on what I think about these releases. That's in the second part. So first, let's go over the uh, legal release here. So this was filed by um, Alan Dershowitz lawyers. So Mr. Spallholtz testified that plaintiff unambiguously told him in 2015 that Professor Dershowitz wasn't involved, that she's never seen him do anything, meaning anything related to any sex abuse, and that, quote, she felt manipulated by her lawyers to go after him. So that's the gist of the Spallholtz deposition, which I'm going to show you guys in a second. Then Miss Boyland, who's also one of her friends, her childhood friends, testified that although plaintiff was her best friend during the time that plaintiff spent with Epstein, plaintiff never mentioned having met Alan Dershowitz or Leslie Wexner, who they also talk about here, or being forced to have sex with either of them. So that's the Boyland deposition. So this is the Michael Spallholtz deposition. I went through and read it. Read it. Uh, in its own term, in their own terms, in his own terms, I should say, and and this is the Rebecca Boylan deposition. So these these were exhibit exhibits um, introduced by Alan Dershowitz's lawyers. This is Rebecca Boylan's deposition, and I went through and read that one as well. It's pretty short. Um, and we're going to sum it up here. So Alan Dershowitz's lawyers actually sum it up pretty well because I didn't want to take their summation uh, at face value because I know they're going to cherry pick what they want to say. So I went through and actually read it. And their summation here of the two depositions is pretty accurate. OK, so let's go through what exactly they said. So when it comes to this Paul Holtz guy, I couldn't find any background information on him. I don't I couldn't really find him on the Internet. There are a lot of people named Paul Holtz. I found this one guy who was like a martial arts teacher in Florida that might be him. Uh, I'm not really sure. There's no picture. Uh, there's no pictorial confirmation of him. So I can't really find who this guy is. Um, but nevertheless, the Virginia Roberts lawyers will know who this guy is and they'll do a thorough background checks on these people. So this Paul Holtz guy's story, according to what he says in his deposition, is that he voluntarily came voluntarily came forward against Virginia Roberts because uh, he thought it was wrong that she was lying about Alan Dershowitz. OK, so these are some of the questions that Alan Dershowitz's lawyers asked Spallholtz during the deposition. What did you tell Professor Dershowitz about whether the allegations, your, al your view of the allegations? Answer, just that, like I had said, that Virginia had said she's never seen Alan, Alan do anything or anything like they actually said, referring to the uh, sex abuse charge. I want to say that she might not have even met him. I can't I can't say for 100 percent. You know, it was something along those lines, but that he he didn't do anything that she felt manipulated by her lawyers uh, for her to go after Alan. So this is the line that Alan Dershowitz has been pushing for years now, which is that Virginia Roberts is all about money and that her lawyers got her to go after him for money. And that and this person's testimony is what his allegations are based on. OK, so next we have another portion of the deposition question. So you actually heard Virginia Roberts make that statement, those statements in substance. 
Yes. Meaning the statements about having been forced um, to go after Alan Dershowitz by her lawyers. That's what they're referring to there. In substance, what did she tell you about Alan Dershowitz? That he wasn't involved, that she'd never seen him do anything. And I want to say, I don't want to say 100%, but um, she's never even met him. So, so again, they're em emphasizing the fact that she told him that she's never seen Alan Dershowitz do anything, that she never even met Alan Dershowitz, okay? So these are very convenient quotes for Alan Dershowitz, but it seems that this Paul Holtz guy actually said them, okay? So they're not cherry picking. These are actually from that deposition, and I actually read it, so just want to uh, clarify that. That doesn't mean that they're true. It just means that this Paul Holtz guy actually said them during this uh, deposition um, that we're looking at right now. Okay. Okay. So in another section, they ask about the uh, time before they fell out of touch in 2002 and whether she told uh, Spallholtz that she was being abused by anybody. And he says, no, she didn't tell him that. Um, did she ever tell you that she was being forced to have sex with anybody? Again, no, never. Did she ever uh, tell you or bring up the name Alan Dershowitz to you? No, never. Uh, did she ever claim to you during that period of time to be a victim of anybody? Again, no. So those are the key parts of the Spallholtz deposition that were mentioned by Alan Dershowitz. And the reason they picked out those parts is because it helps them make their case that um, that Alan Dershowitz had never met Virginia Roberts and that Virginia Roberts never wanted to make allegations against Alan Dershowitz, but she was uh, she was forced to do so by her lawyers because she can get a lot of money from suing Alan Dershowitz. That's the case. That's the case that Alan Dershowitz has been making in the media. The first thing I want to point out with Spallholtz is the fact that she didn't tell one of her friends that she was abused by Alan Dershowitz doesn't this is not dispositive of anything. Sometimes people don't even uh, the people who are survivors of uh, abuse don't even tell their boyfriends or their mothers or their fathers or their closest friends. That's just a characteristic of this kind of uh, this kind of abuse. So next we have Boylan, Rebecca Boylan, who was a purportedly a childhood friend of Virginia Roberts. And this is what she has to say. Before you lost touch with her, did she ever mention to you a gentleman by the name of Leslie Wexner? Answer, no. Or tell you that she had been forced to have sex with Mr. Wexner? No. Did she did she ever say anything about Victoria's Secret? No. Limited brands? No, no, no. So as I understand it, by the time that they had lost touch with Miss Roberts in 2002, she, she had never mentioned Mr. Dershowitz. She had never mentioned Mr. Wexner and had had never claimed to be a victim, correct? Yes, correct. So that's Rebecca Boylan confirming the narrative that Alan Dershowitz wants to confirm, which is that she had never met or had any kind of abuse at the hands of Dershowitz or Wexner. That's the point of that question. In the next section, they try to establish that Virginia Roberts was purely in it for money, okay? Did she tell you what it, what it was that she was after when she was going after Jeffrey Epstein and his ring? Yes, she did. And what did she say? She was going to make all the monsters pay, uh, was pretty much what she said. Pay money? Yes. So she told you she was doing this for money. Um, answer in so many words, yes. In the next section, they again go back to Leslie Wexner about whether Virginia Roberts told Rebecca, uh, Rebecca Boylan here anything about Les Wexner and limited brands and Victoria's Secret. Um, and apparently she did. So this is what they said. Um, According to Rebecca Boylan, Virginia Roberts said that he had lots of money and they were going to be going after him and it would be a lot of money, meaning that the lawyers and Virginia Roberts would be going after Leslie Wexter and Jeffrey Epstein and Alan Dershowitz because they had a lot of money. Um, on how many occasions did she say that to you? I could say for sure at least two times, for sure. Did she tell you why she was going after him or on what basis? This is referring to Les Wexner. Uh, not exactly, no. Only that he was one of Jeffrey's, you know, inner circle. Uh, one of his, I don't know what you call it, uh, what you want to call them. Uh, what's important here is your memory, what you understood. One of Jeffrey's, you know, guys he would lend girls out to. Question, and did she leave you with the impression that she had been lent out to Mr. Wexner? Answer, no. So even within this deposition, the context of the abuse is still there because they're still talking about um, Regina Roberts is still talking about the inner circle of Jeffrey Epstein and how they were monsters, uh, as we saw before, and how girls were being lent out. So even within the deposition that Alan Dershowitz is trying to use to discredit Regina Roberts, the 
the underlying abuses that she's talked about are still present. I just want to observe that from a completely rational perspective. I'm not saying one. I'm not saying anything one way or the other. I'm just saying even within the context of the story they're telling, there's still a narrative of, of abuse that's going on that they admit to. Because Boylan here. Um, who I don't know whether to trust or not. We'll make that decision later. But she's saying that even within her own testimony, where she's trying to discredit Regina Roberts, she's still s admitting that Regina Roberts was talking about some kind of abuse going on. But that, but in this in this section, she says that she never got the impression that that uh, that Regina Roberts herself was being abused. Okay, but your impression is not really definitive evidence. That's the problem. Okay, but we'll talk about that later. Next, and during that time when she was telling you about it after two of you had reconnected, she never suggested to you that she had uh, she had had sex with Mr. Wexner, did she? Um, answer. No, she did not. Okay, so that part is much clearer. She's saying that there's definitively no admission of any kind of involvement, sexual involvement with Mr. Wexner when it comes to Regina Roberts. So in the next section, we move back on to Alan Dershowitz. What did she say to you? So this is another section of the deposition. She said that I, I never wanted to go after Alan Dershowitz, that she had felt pressure by her lawyers to go after Alan. So this is another relevant section. So the reason they covered Wexner here is because they want to establish an overall picture that Virginia Roberts was going after many other rich men as well, other than Alan Dershowitz. That's why they focused on Al uh, Les Wexner here. Now they're bringing it back to uh, Alan Dershowitz, but they're trying to establish the overall picture that Virginia Roberts is just a money grubber who wanted to go after all these rich men. OK, so that's the narrative that they're trying to paint here. That's all very obvious. Just a factual statement about their strategy here. Now, as of the time she said this to you, she had never told you that she had sex with Alan Dershowitz. Um, had she? Answer. No, she never had. Next question. And she never told you that she had ever met him. Correct. Answer. Correct. Yes. Meaning that um, according to Boylan, uh, Virginia Roberts never even told her that she met Alan Dershowitz, let alone had been abused by him. Next question, on how many occasions, to the best of your memory, did she tell you that she hadn't wanted to go after Alan Dershowitz, but her lawyers pressured her to? I would say two occasions. So that's the gist of the Rebecca Boylan deposition. You guys get the point that they're trying to make with this. They're trying to say that Virginia Roberts was never abused by Alan Dershowitz. She never met Alan Dershowitz. She was simply pressured to go after Alan Dershowitz uh, by her lawyers, okay? Not because anything material happened to her. And they end off by saying the following, efforts by plaintiff's counsel to cross-examine these witnesses by suggesting that they were making these statements for financial gain were highly unsuccessful and only only elicited further testimony that they had never been paid nor promised anything by anyone and that they came forward voluntarily in order to do the right thing because they believe Ms. Giffray is lying about Mr. Dershowitz based upon her own words. And that's referring to Spallholtz and the Boylan depositions, which is what we just went through. Okay, so that is the gist of the argument, the best argument that Alan Dershowitz is making. The reason that he's been so confident that he would win this case is because he was relying on these two people that knew Regina Roberts to come forward and say that she is lying and that she was pressured to go after him and other uh, the other men because uh, because uh, Regina Roberts and her lawyers thought that they can make a lot of money. So as I said in the beginning, do not take anything that Alan Dershowitz and his lawyer says at face value. And you shouldn't, say, you shouldn't take the other side at face value either. What you should do is look at the evidence to the best of your ability and look at the uh, reasons why both sides are saying what they're saying and look at who might be the most credible. So like I said in the beginning, um, Virginia Roberts' lawyers will have an opportunity to go through and try to uh, impeach these witnesses, meaning try to find holes in their arguments, right? So they, may, so they say here that there was no financial gain, meaning that Alan Dershowitz did not pay off these people to come forward against Virginia Roberts and that they did it out of their own volition because they wanted to come out and tell the truth about how Virginia Roberts was lying about Alan Dershowitz. That's Alan Dershowitz's case. Now, there are many other reasons to lie about somebody other than money. So, for example, Virginia Roberts could have fallen out with this Boylan woman and she wants to get back at Virginia Roberts. That could be a possible reason why she would come out and lie in favor of uh, of Alan Dershowitz and say exactly what he wanted said. OK, and I don't know anything about this Michael Spallholtz guy, but he might have a, a, a grudge against Virginia Roberts for whatever reason. People get into conflicts with one another all the time. Friends get into conflicts with one another all the time. So. My whole point is 
I don't trust Alan Dershowitz just based on his history. He's a very shifty person. So it's very convenient that both of these people's deposition depositions are, you know, 100 percent fitting to his narrative that Virginia Roberts is a liar. So I, if you look at if you ask me who's more credible, I would say Virginia Roberts. That doesn't mean I believe every single word she says. Um, sometimes uh, survivors have stories that don't really match up with reality because they're intentionally lying or because they just they just uh, don't remember uh, the story 100%. So there are many holes. There can be many holes in the narrative of uh, survivors of abuse. So that's that's normal, right? But sometimes some some small amount of the women are making things up for money. That's also true. That's been a case. There are there are actual gold diggers, but that doesn't mean that Virginia Roberts is one, right? That doesn't mean that Alan Dershowitz, everything that Alan Dershowitz is saying is true. So if a jury actually believes everything that these two people are saying, Boylan and Spallholtz, then it's very bad for Virginia Roberts. She's probably going to lose. If this gets to a jury trial, this is the discovery phase right now. We're in the pre-trial phase. A trial has not happened in this case yet, but if 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 the Virginia Roberts lawyers can't find any holes in the testimony of Spallholtz and Boylan, then Virginia Roberts is probably going to lose this case. Because if it turns out that the jury believes what Spallholtz and Boylan are saying, then that's a slam dunk for Alan Dershowitz. Because because everything Alan Dershowitz has been saying about Virginia Roberts is verified by these two people's depositions. That's not good for Virginia Roberts' case from a legal perspective. Okay, when it comes to evaluating evidence. The jury is going to have to take these depositions into account. And if the Virginia Roberts side are not able to discredit these two people uh, by finding some kind of reason why they would be stretching the truth or lying, then the the uh, jury has to take the uh, take uh, what they're saying as fact um, when it comes to their testimony. And that's not good for Virginia Roberts. And she's probably going to lose. OK, so I have to give you guys honest analysis on what's going on, despite the fact that I'm no fan of Alan Dershowitz. But I'm telling you guys from a legal perspective, what's going to happen in the in the in the lawsuit. OK, in, in a jury trial, if it goes to that. So it's not looking good for Virginia Roberts if these uh, if these testimony turns out to be uh, true. All right, guys, that's all I got to say for this update. I'll be doing another update when Virginia Roberts side responds to this um, to keep up with all my videos. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell and press all to get all my videos. And if you like this video, make sure to like the video and comment below with what you have to say on this. And if you're a longtime viewer of my channel, please support me on Patreon or by joining channel memberships by clicking the blue join button down below. With that being said, I'll see you guys in my next video. As always, peace. In evidence of Page Trees. This is Judge Dredd. In case you people have forgotten. Mama is not the law. I am the law. Mama is a common criminal. Guilty of murder. And as of now, under sentence of death. Any who obstruct me in carrying out my duty will be treated as an accessory to her crimes. You have been warned. And as for you, Mama, judgment time.